Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and today we are back with another dun, dun. Mukbang. Woo, 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 woo. I haven't done this in forever, but guys, we're back with Dandan and we're going to be doing a McDonald's with their new sauces with some wing stop mukbang while we go over some juicy confessions as well as probably the most unhinged, absolutely redonkulous wedding impregnation scandal that has ever occurred in the history of life. Like, I've never heard shit like this. I can't stop thinking about it. I think about this breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like, what's on your mind, Stephanie? <laughs> this story has been on my mind, okay? But before we get started, I was just thinking about this the other day because Sophie is, Sophie, one of my nieces, her birthday is coming up in a few months and she's turning three. And I'm like, wow, three is not that old. There are things in my life that I have liked and enjoyed for longer than I've liked my niece. I've only liked her for like a few months, actually. I'm just kidding, okay? But it was kind of an odd moment for me because I've been obsessed with Raycon earbuds for longer than Sophie has been on this planet. This year, Raycon is turning six and they're actually having an anniversary sale. So Raycon has one of the, one of the coolest, most impressive company stories. They started six years ago with a mission to make a name for themselves in the premium audio space, which is incredibly difficult to do, but they're like, no. We're gonna do it with our product. We're gonna make earbuds that have top-notch quality, sound, experience, with thoughtful features like a 32-hour battery life, perfect in-ear fit, at half the price as other premium audio brands. Like there is a reason that their earbuds have racked up up to 78,000 five-star reviews. Dang. I use my Raycons on a daily basis when I'm editing pods, running on the treadmill. I haven't really been doing that as much these days. Um, going on my walks, like low speed walks, okay? <laughs> or even just like when I'm at the bookstore, I want to have my own emotional main character moment. And like while I'm picking out books, I'm like, Papa, is that you? I'm just kidding, <laughs> I'm just kidding, okay? <laughs> we used it when we went to a haunted lake recently, and the question was, do Raycons keep the ghost away? Maybe, potentially, absolutely. It's also very easy for you to make Zoom calls so you can use them for work and for play, and it's the perfect earbud. Also, because it's flat, it's so discreet, you can actually watch movies while laying on your side or if you fall asleep, it's perfect. And now they're turning six and expanding. Like, they've expanded the same concept, okay, of how do we make our customers' lives better and easier and make things that they're gonna love and use every single day. They've expanded into Raycon Home, Raycon Power Tech, with their biggest sale of the year going on now. Hurry now to buyraycon.com slash bis and use code BIRTHDAY to get 20 to 40% off site-wide. That's buyraycon.com slash bis and use code BIRTHDAY to get 20 to 40% off site-wide. And thank you Raycon for sponsoring today's video and let's get into it. I actually wanna show you guys something. I'm an artist, I'm a creative person and if you don't think that I am, then you're kidding yourself because you don't know me. I'm an artist. Wow, wow. Do you see this? I got a paint easel is that what you call it? No, a palette. Palette, palette. A palette <laughs> for my McDonald's Wait, sauces. You don't have the new one on there? No, I got the new ones all down here. Well, I you got gotta the, put the new, new one on there. Spicy, sweet and spicy jam. This is apparently Southern inspired. I do have to disclose McDonald's sent this to me according to their <laughs> box, okay? And then Mambo. Look at this. This is a DC inspired. I'm gonna try with the fries. Okay, it's, so which one are you trying? The jam. Sweet spicy jam. Mm. Oh my gosh. It's actually spicy. Let's mm. try this mambo sauce. Mm. Wow. The sweet spicy jam. I normally don't like jam with salty things. Oh. It's so good. Mm. And then you gotta try the sweet spicy jam. Oh, this is perfect. Oh yeah, you're gonna love it with like your breakfast sandwiches. That's me. Okay, let me try the mambo. Going in, I feel like I'd like the mambo more. Ooh, it does smell spicy. This is mambo. Mmm. Mmm. Mambo's really good, but I love the jam. The mambo is also spicy. Mmm. Mm. I like the mambo mm -hmm. too. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Here's a ranch mm. for you. Mmm. Wow. Dad, they're both good. The mambo is kind of a sour spicy. Wow. It's what a good. trip. Okay, so now let's get us a wing. They have salt and vinegar wings now, which I ordered, but I don't know if this is the lemon pepper. I dipped it in blue cheese and not What's... ranch. One of them is curry, Thai curry. This one? I think so. Oh my god. Whoa. Oh my god. Whoa. Mmm. 
Mm. Yeah. What you got right now? Lemon pepper. Oh yeah. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna dip the lemon pepper wing in the jam. Mm. Okay. Mm. Oh, mm -mm -mm. that's interesting. I like it. Mmm. Wow. Mm. Wait. Mm hmm. So one's dry lemon pepper and one's wet? Hmm. That's fing weird. What? Maybe that's salt and vinegar then. <laughs> Wait. Okay, then try it. Is that lemon pepper? Mm hmm. That's lemon pepper? Mm -hmm. What about that one you're eating, babe? The dry one is salt and vinegar. I've never had this before, but it's my new favorite. Actually, no, the lemon pepper is so juicy, but. You didn't order the flavor I like? What's the flavor what do you, you like? like? Something Korean, I guess. <laughs> Anything Korean. Oh. Chicken sandwich or the Big Mac? I'll take Big, Big Mac. Mac. Okay. I knew it! <laughs> Come on. Dude, when we were a kid, this looks so massive. Now it looks kind of small. This is about to get crazy. This is October of 2022. So it wasn't even that long ago when shit went absolutely, it went down. Give me two names. Give me two names. This happened in China. So give me two names. What's the groom's name? Let's call the groom Greg. Let's call the bride Brittany. Y'all were too slow. Y'all were too slow. Greg. Ja is James. Mmm, James. I like that. <laughs> what the fuck? James? Okay, James and Brie. Susie. <laughs> James and Susie, give me a f boy guy name. Daniel. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yo. Then I'll try that. This? Yeah, can I oh. one? Yeah. Mm. It's a rice triangle with cheese inside. I was hesitant because it looks a little dry, but it's really good. Mmm. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Mmm. I don't know. Christopher? I like Kevin. They're Chinese. They're Chinese. Yeah, Kev. Kevin. Kev. 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 James is the groom, bride is Susie, Kevin is the f boy. Mm -hmm. Guys, this is like the plot of Game of Thrones right now, so a lot of people keep up. Okay. James, Susie, dating for two years, and mm -hmm. he finally proposes. Now, both of them are kind of from like this middle class area in China, and I just want to preface, they're not rich, they're not loaded, they don't have like all this money saved up. But James is like, Susie, baby, I will do anything to marry you. He gets down on one knee. He's like, list everything that you want. Uh -huh. So in China, we can talk about this if you guys want this, like a midnight mango on this. Women have the power in the sense that there's so many unmarried men mm -hmm. and not enough women. Mm. So for like every like 10... Supply demand. Supply demand, yeah. You're right. You can't say that. I can say that. <laughs> okay, so like supply demand, mm -hmm. right? If there's 10 men that want to get married and only one woman that's single... It's kind of a fight. So James is like, Susie, baby, I know you can marry someone else, so just name the price. I, I want to do everything for you. And she said, okay, my parents won't let me get married unless you pay our family 22,000 USD, a dowry. That's on top of paying for the whole wedding. That's on top of trying to buy a house after where they get married. It's expensive. So for him to pay all of this, James mm -hmm. loves Susie. Mm -hmm. He shows up at her house with all these gold little items. Why do you guys do gold? What's the symbolic reason? It's just like... A gift? Yeah, a gift. Mm. Gold. Yeah. Meaning, money, <laughs> wealth. Money. Yeah. No, I like it. Wait, no. you eat Big Mac with chopsticks? I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Stephanie eats like chips with chopsticks. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. Yeah, hot Cheetos. And yeah, she eats like fruit with chopsticks. I'll even eat popcorn with chops. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretzels. I have a thing. The minute food touches my physical hand, I have to wash my hands. Mm -hmm. Even a dry chip with no oil, no seasoning, nothing. When did that start? Do you remember? Are you my therapist? <laughs> he said, when did the trauma hit? Um. Mm. Guys, this tastes like butt crack. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh. I like it. Mm -hmm. Then I like some butt guy. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know you were a butt guy. <laughs> Everything is ready for this wedding. They planned it to the T. They went to the courthouse. They got their wedding documents. This is really important. So they get their wedding documents. She's got the dress and it's maybe like a week before the wedding. I'm gonna read you what she's texting to Kev. This is the bride. Now tell me, how would you describe this woman? Innocent. Innocent. What else? What are, what are the other words? Pretty. Pretty. Okay, what else? A student. Mm, mm-hmm. Um, okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> Your son brings home this girl. You know nothing about her. Just based off in sang, Korean first impression. Mm -hmm. Don't you feel like sweet? Yeah, innocent. she yeah. looks nice. She looks innocent. This is what she's texting to someone who is not her husband a few days before the wedding. Okay? She gets a text message from her friend Kevin. Mm -hmm. Ha ha ha! I want to f you in your wedding dress. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> He said, mm. How do you think she would respond looking at her pictures? Well, by just by looking at her, yeah. she'll be like, oh, ew, gross. Like, she said, I know. I feel so naughty because I want you to, too. He texted, I have to come inside you tomorrow. <laughs> he also starts texting her. He says, and I quote, I will mm, inside you tomorrow. And after you get pregnant, we can guess who the baby's father is. We can leave it in God's hands. The um. wife responds, yeah, I'm not afraid. Just leave it to God. Bro, this story escalates. Okay, so and this is like right before their wedding. Right before she already has the wedding dress, engagement photos, everything. They're legally married. Kev, Kev texts her and says, "Hey, how about we invite another man into the picture? Then we can really guess. Now it's like a three for one, baby. <laughs> it's thirty-three percent me, thirty-three percent him, and thirty-three percent your husband." Bro, what is going on? Wow. He says, "Why don't we have a threesome tomorrow? Make things more exciting." The night before her wedding. So you know how usually in tradition, you don't spend the night with your husband or soon to be husband. So mm -hmm. she was at her own place telling her husband, telling James, like, I'm just going to get ready for the wedding night. I'm going to go to sleep early. She was caught going in and out of multiple different hotels with Kev and another man. Bro. Okay, then it gets crazier. Are you thinking, okay, maybe she's one of those messed up people who thinks it's not marriage until the wedding happens. Still divorce, right? But it gets crazier. So she texts him on her wedding day that she's getting her makeup done. She's like, I'm about to walk down the aisle. He says, I will wait for you to put on your wedding dress and I want to fork you again. At the wedding. Like right after. <laughs> yeah. This is where it goes all wrong. I mean, it's already wrong. She's cheated on her husband with presumably two men in her wedding dress before she walks down the aisle. Mm -hmm. Imagine your wife walks down the aisle and you realize that she forked another man in that wedding dress before she walks down the aisle. Bro. Dude. So after all these text messages are said and done, what does Kev do? He does what boys do. He takes screenshots mm -hmm. of all these text messages. Mm -hmm. And in China, they have like these big WhatsApp groups or these like WeChat groups where it's just a group chat of think about you and your closest guy friends, but then all of their guy friends and then all of your guy. It's like a web of like a hundred <laughs> dudes that kind yes. of know each other, but don't really know each other that much. Yeah. So it's not just you and your besties. It's oh. you and your besties and the besties friends and friends. That, it, there's like three degrees apart. Okay. Okay. He starts screenshotting this, sending it to his group chat with like tens, if not a hundred different dudes on there. And he's so proud of himself. He's Bruh. literally like being like, look what I did. Look what I did. He's showing oh it off. God. And everyone is like, oh my God. He texts into the group chat. Don't worry, bros. I'm going to come at you guys with a video. I'm going to get a video. She promised we could do a video tonight after the wedding. And so people are saying like, oh my God, you got to get the footage of you doing her while she's in the wedding dress. Dude, this is like, dude. Yeah, literally, dude. so like bad. And then he's like getting off on all of these people saying, you're the man, you're the man. So he goes back to Susie mm -hmm. and they make a, they make a mm -hmm. They make the tape. She's in the wedding dress. Her face is in there and everything. This girl has no fear. And then he turns around and texts her. You know you gotta buy me shoes, right? Excuse me? He said, if a guy comes into a marriage and takes the wife, like sleeps with the wife, mm -hmm. it's bad luck. That means I broke your shoe. So you have to buy me shoes. Mm. So he somehow convinces her to buy him shoes. So this newlywed wife not only porks this guy and his <laughs> friend and yeah. makes videos of it in her wedding dress, she buys him a pair of shoes. Oh my God. Can you imagine that? Like, oh, bro. Nah, nah. nah. Is it that spicy? Yeah, something spicy. Oh, yeah. oh no, wings. Some of the wings mm. are spicy. Which one's the best, honey? The Korean one is the best. <laughs> oh, wow, it is spicy. Really? Mm -hmm. But spicy or no? Be, be bad spicy. Continues to eat it. They go through with the wedding. Mm -hmm. They make the S tape. He starts sending this to his group chat. And guess who's in his group chat? The husband. Not the husband, but the husband's friend. Mm. So. 
The crazy thing is, Kev did not blur anything. So he was sending pictures of even their engagement photos. So mm -hmm. James and Susie's, he was sending it being like, this is the bride, this is the husband, and I just forked the bride. Bro. He didn't even blur out her username. He didn't blur out anything. So her identity is now in this group chat with like 100 people who know that she cheated on her husband and made an S tape. And he's like, just you wait, I'm gonna send you the S tape into this group chat. So James's friend sees it immediately messages Susie and is like, hey girl, I know exactly what you did and if you don't tell James, I'm gonna tell him myself. Susie's like, no, you cannot because I think I'm pregnant. So for the sake of our family, Whoa. and I don't think I'm pregnant from uh, Kev, I think I'm pregnant from James. You don't want my kid to grow up without a daddy, do you? She guilt trip him. Mm. There's so many mean people in this story. Because if you were that friend, what would you do? If you don't even want to tell your friend, you would just shut up about it, right? He starts posting it around other group chats. The, the friend? James's friend! No. Wow. Starts posting it in his group chats with like a hundred different dudes. And he's like, you'll never believe this story. So basically, James and Susie got married and then Susie forked Kev and like, here are all the pictures. So the friend put it in his group chat with like a hundred people. And he was thinking, well, you know, James is not in this group chat. So these are my buddies. These are my like 98 buddies. One of these 98 buddies. Okay, no, like a lot of these 98 buddies. 97 of these 98 buddies go to their own different group chats and start spreading the news because they're like word of mouth <laughs> <laughs> yes word of mouth and people love drama hey you know that girl that lives in apartment c you know the yes and her husband is the one that drives guess what she did well one day mm -hmm. james is sitting at home he's married he's married to the love of his life people said that he's always done everything for susie he's like whipped he's going through his phone eating breakfast and he's sucked into this drama he's reading it oh my god bride is cheating on her. three in her wedding oh this is so good this is so good and the <laughs> chat is moving so fast because there's like a hundred people in there so yeah. people are like oh my god it's just not that moving so he's like man i gotta scroll up and find this scroll 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 scroll, scroll. clicks on the video it starts playing and it's like really sensual. There's like lots of body parts, lots of movement. And it, it's like one of those uh, cinematic movies. It's here are the toes, wiggle the toes, baby. Let me, let me get your kneecaps. Let me get your hoo-ha. And then all the way up and all the way up. And it slowly pans to the face. And it's his wife. Wow, dude. How would you react to that? Like, wow. He basically was so upset. Mm. He said he was gonna kill Kev. Kev had no shame. And turns out, somewhere in the same province, there was another girl eating lunch. She's scroll, scroll, scrolling. The video pans. She's like, that's my fucking boyfriend, Kev! He also has a girlfriend. <laughs> he also has a girlfriend, okay? Yeah, the two ended up getting divorced, but it's just crazy. She can't even leave the house. Susie can't even leave the house anymore because the whole town knows about this. They actually DM her. They message her. They post on her social media, her SNS, and they say things like, Hey, I'm in the market for a new pair of shoes. <laughs> anyway, craziest story. Hey, Bess, I need your advice. <laughs> I'm just jumping right into confession. <laughs> hey, Bess, I need your advice. Might be long, but please help. So my husband and I, I'm already traumatized. I moved from one state to another and he ended up finding a decent job. At the job, he's made a friend with a guy who has a wife too. So he would come home and tell me stories about him and his friend and they're so much alike personality wise. And finally, the time comes for us to all finally get together and meet. Well, right off the bat, I could tell that this man has boundary issues. I am super introverted and I don't like assuming things. So I would always brush off how oddly close that he would get to me. So friend, my husband's friend, let's call him that, really likes to joke around. My husband and I call him a man child because of how he acts. To give you some insight in how he would treat me, he would like to sometimes stand behind me and put his face really close to mine and think it's funny, but it makes me so uncomfortable. Bro. Bro. What? I have a thing. It, okay, I'm so sorry. Especially if you're a man, I have a thing with personal space. Mm. With girls, it takes me a second, but usually I can open up. With men, it, like... Yeah. yeah, don't get near my face. Don't get near my waist. It's always the waist. Like, don't put your hand anywhere yeah. near my waist, yeah. please. And thank you very much. Like, oh, let me just squeeze on by here. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, you just can squeeze my left butt cheek. Hey, you do that, but I kind of like it when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Anyway, and I would get really uncomfortable. So fast forward to my husband's birthday party. I invited 
the friend and his wife and some other friends to go bowling because we love to bowl. It's summertime, so I'm wearing biker shorts and a t-shirt, no makeup, nothing fancy or eye-catching at all. We have about two lanes because of how many people came to bowl, and my husband helped set up lane one and is helping his other friend set up lane two, so I get up to bowl because it's my turn, and after me, his friend is going. As I'm walking back to my seat, I feel a snack on my ass. Whoa! Oh! What the fuck, <laughs> dude? What the <laughs> bro? <laughs> Wait, it's Yo. not funny, but it's funny because who it's, does that? Bro, it's shocking. <laughs> it's so shocking. How would you react? Uh, I see my girlfriend getting slept. By your best friend. Like, on the butt. Oh, oh, oh. Like, he's catching my hand outside. <laughs> it's over. Like, you got yeah, that's I turn around. And his friend, who has a pregnant wife, smacked my ass. I'm so shocked. I didn't know what to say. The wife had seen all of this. <gasps> Says nothing. Oh, my God. I try to tell my husband, but he's so busy, he's not even listening to me. Mm. Uh -oh. Fast forward a week. A week? A week later, I tell my husband what happened, and he's pissed. I tell him to just drop the matter because it's already been a week, and I don't want to start any shit. They're co-workers. Oh, no. Oh, that's complicated. That's even more complicated. Yeah, especially when you just moved to a new town. Yeah. And it's like, okay, this is my only job right now. Now, now make it your boss. <gasps> oh, my God. I don't, I don't care if it's the boss Bro. or the president. Like yeah. Biden. <laughs> Biden. <laughs> so a couple weeks later, we're at the gender reveal. And my husband brings it up to him that, like, you know, hey, don't fucking do that. Mm -hmm. And his excuse is he was pre-drinking before he got to the bowling alley and was drunk and doesn't remember doing that. But he apologizes and the conversation is dropped. Mm. So fast forward to months later and it's their baby shower. All is going well and at the end we're all outside talking in a group. Okay, it's me, my husband, the friend's wife, uh -huh. and the wife's brother. Mm -hmm, so uh -huh. the friend is not there and yeah. some other people. Anyways, as I'm talking, I again felt this smack on my ass. <laughs> but at this point, jail. Who was it? Fucking the guy. I'm beyond pissed and uncomfortable. I tell my husband we need to leave. And as we're in the car, I tell him what happened and he's understandably upset. I tell him I didn't want to say anything because it's their baby shower and I didn't want to have that conversation again. Even though I thought I shouldn't have to tell him twice not to smack my ass. So I drop it. Halloween rolls around. I'm at my apartment hanging out with my husband and wife's brother. We somehow get into the conversation of what friend has done to me to only find out that it wasn't just the first time he's done this. Long ago, before they met us, pregnant wife thought that pregnant wife's best friend and the guy, the smacker, uh -huh. were fucking each other. Mm. Just because he liked to spank everyone. Because of how close they were being, and he would sometimes grab his wife's best friend's boobs what in front of everyone and joke it off. <laughs> wife's family would try and talk to her about breaking up with him because of how he acted but she always brushed it off and said it didn't bother her which flabbergasted me because I would not be okay with that so my husband and I ended up buying our very first ever home and invite friend and his wife over to see the new place and when I tell <laughs> no, you bro. Oh, and when I tell you her demeanor around me changed it changed mm. so I'm trying to show his wife around and she acts like she couldn't care less my house is not that big, so it only take 10 minutes max to show her the place, but she doesn't give a shit. So we're standing in the living room talking, you know, the friend and friend's wife, while my husband is making room in the garage, so that way the people helping us move our shit in has room to walk. I have bookshelves in the living room kitchen area that blocks the behind the fridge. They use the bookshelf as a wall type thing, and this bitch deadass looks at me and goes, what are you going to do with that? Like, just asking why she has it there. Mm. And I'm so shocked and confused because that's really rude, you know? Yeah. And she says, well, I'm going to keep it so it doesn't show off the back of my fridge. I might paint it because I don't like the dark wood look. And she says to me, yeah, I would do that. Like, how those mean girls in movies try to make a statement. Like, bitch, what the fuck you want me to do with it? Knock down the bookcase <laughs> so your kids can touch the back of the fridge and get electrocuted? Like, the fuck? <laughs> Okay, but I didn't say that. Now I feel like I need to state that I'm in no way attracted to her husband or have any kind of secret feelings for him. He's not my type, but I feel like I'm being treated shitty because of how her husband treats me. I feel like if she has such a problem with how he acts, she needs to talk to him about it. I understand. I probably should have said something long ago because I more than likely have let him believe that this type of behavior is okay, but like, Bro, I don't like confrontation. What? But who smacks other people's ass? I feel like being told once is enough for a normal person to understand that it's not okay and don't touch me. I'm not really good at making friends and besides that, the husband and the wife are decent people which is why we tend to hang out with them but now with how the wife acts, she makes me feel like it's almost my fault and I sometimes wonder if it is. My friend told me that what he has done is considered sexual 
sexual assaults, but I don't know anymore. I need your advice. Is it my fault? And should we continue being friends with them? Am I crazy and overthinking things? I just feel like the wife is taking out her frustrations about her husband on me. What would you do in this situation? Uh-uh. What would you I, mean, do I think it's a pretty easy one. I think she's not at her fault, for sure. Just c cut them off. I would like get some like spray. pepper spray oh, on your butt. On my butt. <laughs> <laughs> if he touches it, it yes. and then touches his eye. Uh huh. Yeah, I would like probably wear leggings and then spray it oh, on yeah. the butt. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. the husband can wear a wig, act like the wife, mm -hmm. and walk downstairs. Yes. And then, Bend over. And then pepper spray. Mm -hmm. mm. So the friend will spank the husband's ass. Yeah. And then get the pepper spray on his hand. Bro, well, I'm envisioning and you being a and leggings and bent <laughs> over in the kitchen right now. It's really a visual. It's really something. Is <laughs> it a good visual? Yeah. <laughs> I think your ass would look great. Or one of those, like, you know, the screaming chicken toy? <gasps> ah, yes. <laughs> yeah. Like that one? No. I s stuck one in the butt. And then he smacks it and goes, <laughs> <laughs> Or put a phone uh -huh. with the camera on. Oh! Oh, in the back of the uh, jeans. Uh -huh. Oh, uh -huh. that's so good. That's a good one too. That's a good one. Yes. Okay, I would do that. Mm -hmm. I think um a little bit of more of a <laughs> rational approach would be first of all, it's not your fault. That's crazy. It's not your fault. And the wife seems like she's got issues. Obviously, the husband has cheated on her. It seems to be that way. She seems insecure and she doesn't handle it in a way that is mature <laughs> or reasonable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh -huh. I would stand my ground at least. I would literally confront the wife. I'd be like, let's go have a coffee date. I would shit myself for two hours straight before. And then I would sit down and be like, I don't know what the problem is. I feel like there was a shift in our friendship. I just want to say, is it because of the ass smacking? Because obviously that's not my choice. I feel like the wife is probably in a unhealthy relationship mm -hmm. with the husband yeah so it's like spilling over to everything else mm -hmm. so unless she can fix that with the husband like it, it doesn't seem like she's having that conversation with the husband um, to say stop smacking people's ass mm -hmm. right so i don't know if it will get fixed i don't know if the correct terminology is essay but it's definitely harassment mm -hmm. yeah to essay because oh, yeah. it is assault mm -hmm. you are yeah. putting your hands on someone not just saying things it is for yeah, sure it is. But it's like, assault yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah, because if I punch someone, that's assault. Yeah. Yeah, so this is essay. It is assault. Yeah. Like unwanted mm -hmm. touch. Touch in yeah. private areas. Yeah. Even hands. Like, if you hold hands at work, like. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. a thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Dang. Yeah. My friend's cousin gave us all herpes. Hmm? What? First of all, I'd like to start by giving a backstory about how our friend group was in middle school, or else the story is not going to make sense. My friend group consisted of four girls, including me. Yeah, we're definitely not popular in middle school. We were weird. And when I say weird, I mean weird. Like, we'd be the type of group... <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm so sorry. I'm not laughing at you. It's the visual. We'd be the type of group to hiss or bark at people when they walked past us. <laughs> I don't think that's weird. That's cool. That's Dene. Hey, hey, hey. hey, what? Listen. <laughs> Listen, you know what growing up is? Growing up is realizing that the kids who did the Naruto run in the hallways were actually the cool kids. Mm -hmm. Like the Naruto run kids in high school, they're out here killing the game in whatever field they're in. The jocks, I don't, I don't know what they're doing. Yeah. They're losers. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. It's all the Naruto run kids. They're the backbone of society. They're out here like the hottest people around. Anyway, I mean, we would cut holes into our school bologna slices and put it on our face as mastering lunch. As what? <laughs> they would get sandwich meat, cut out eyes, and put <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> I got my face pushed into the girls' school toilet because we were losers. <laughs> oh, shit. This part is extremely pertinent to the story, okay? <laughs> my friends had the personality of middle school boys, if not worse. Like, we were really nasty. We had fart on top of each other. <laughs> <laughs> I would keep going on about how nasty we are, but that's another story. Now let's get into the herpes part. If you have a sensitive stomach, please skip this. Oh. One of my friend's cousin decided to invite us all to my friend's house to hang out. We're going to call my friend's cousin Ruby. Ruby's like the opposite of us. She knew how to talk to boys. She was one of the middle school girls who had a boyfriend every week because middle school relationships only last five business days. <laughs> We're all hanging out in Ruby's room when we saw one of those bean boozled jelly beans. I don't know what got in our minds, but it definitely was our middle school boy mentalities. 
we sat in a circle and we all ate one and laughed whenever one of us got one of those nasty beans. And this escalated so quickly because one of my friends decided to come up with the greatest idea and say that every time someone got a nasty bean, we should go, ah! Ah! It's so nasty. Spill it. We, we should go in a circle, spitting the bean into each other's oh. mouth. Ah! And of uh, course, us being nasty, we thought this was the greatest idea. Oh my gosh, like, I cannot believe how nasty this is. So when Ruby would get a nasty bean, she would spit the bean in one person's mouth, and then that person would chew the bean, and then I spit it in the next person's mouth, and we did this with at least three oh. different beans. Little did we know that Ruby had herp. We had all noticed that she had blisters on her mouth when we arrived, but she had just pushed it off as an allergic reaction to chapstick. Obviously, we believed her because herpes wasn't the first thing we would think of since we're just middle schoolers. The next few weeks were hell. All of my friends, including me, were getting blisters in our mouths and we had no idea why. We asked Ruby if she was sick because we were getting the same blisters as her and she told us that she had herpes. Say. Ruby genuinely didn't know she had herpes until after we left her house that day. Her mom saw her mouth and got her in a lot of trouble. When I tell you, I was terrified of my mom seeing me. I would act like I'm finally going through my I hate parents teenage phase just so I could lock myself in my room for all day for nearly two weeks and would go out for school and night to get food and that's it. Anyway, I'm in college now and I hope I never kiss anyone because the thought of us sharing saliva and possibly getting herpes is terrifying. That's my confession. I love you and your videos so much. Thank you for all the great content you put out. Bye. You said bye. That's my crazy story. Bye. <laughs> yeah, so what happens if you get herpes? It's uncomfortable. It's like getting blisters on your mouth and it lasts a while. And I'm sure because of the social stigma, it's, it's isolating. That's crazy. I don't know which part is more crazy. The baloney face mask? <laughs> <laughs> like the baloney, the hissing at people? I just know y'all are going some places though, okay? Wow. Anyway, a hopeless romantic boy having a pathetic crush on his personal trainer, Cryface. Stephanie, babes, Miss Girl, I need help. Like, oh my god, clear, <laughs> big boobs, chow. Anyway, I have a fat ass crush on my personal trainer. Cry face. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's I don't know if it's my attachment issues or my daddy issues. LMAO. Okay. <laughs> P.S. I'm biologically male, but I identify as non-binary, bisexual, but honestly, these days, I don't even know what I am because I just know that I'm not straight babes. Clown emoji. <laughs> <laughs> These emojis. Oh my God. These are too many emojis. So basically, I got a personal trainer starting April of this year. And it started off good, no feelings attached, just going to the gym to work on myself and attend my private training sessions. But as time gradually passes, we tend to feel a lot closer, or at least I'd like to think so, you know? So I guess it's just me starting to develop a crush for him. I don't know. I need therapy. We start to have more banter with each other and a little bit flirtatious is happening. I'm getting butterflies as I type this. Like I'm literally about to fart. <laughs> <laughs> Part of me thinks and is trying not to get ahead of myself and not to think too much about it and have my walls and boundaries up. Cause I don't know, maybe he's doing this for marketing purposes. I don't want to get hurt, mm -hmm. but also because he's 28 years old and I'm 21 and he's in a five year relationship. <laughs> That part is probably the more pertinent information that mm -hmm. you should have put in like the beginning, you know? <laughs> okay. And he's probably maybe even thinking about marriage at this point, I guess. Like, I don't mind the age gap, but yeah, he's in a five-year relationship. Like, hello, where is mine? Cry face. <laughs> but anyways, I'm typing this because I need y'all's advice, opinion, but also like. I just need it out of my system. And yes, I know <laughs> this is how it's typed, by the way. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm being very consistent with the script. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. I know <laughs> this is the worst way. Like, I hope he don't watch this. I'm like, sorry, I should have gone to therapy. But like, as an unemployed uni student, Miss Girl, I can't even afford the discounted price. Clown emoji. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot of emojis though. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's like, I think I'm... Um, this is actually all emoji. I've been interpreting emojis <laughs> this whole time. So here's some of the situations that kind of made me question my personal. Well, we trainer. should do like texting each other only an emoji challenge. Oh. <gasps> we should text each other like where to meet, and it's only emojis. Oh, so it's like, like everything. We can do that. Just everything. We're just talking, talking in emoji. Like. Oh. Is that <laughs>
Dude, <laughs> don't do dude. Did you know he has to do the emojis when he types them? What? So if he sends you a smiley emoji, he has to go like this. <laughs> oh. If he sends you like a confused emoji, he has to go. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, what the f are you doing over there? Okay. Yeah. Do you save the text in your head and then do the emoji? I would try to envision Imagine. my tone. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, smiley face. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's so weird. Okay. So one of them being was when I was working out alone in the gym because we didn't have PT session that day. And I was close to finishing my workout session. And that's when he comes in and does his own workout. Okay, that part's a little delulu. <laughs> okay, we briefly talked and just caught up and all blah blah blah, then just went back to our own workouts. I was finishing up and just left while he was just starting and warming up. I left without saying goodbye and thought nothing of it. Then the next PT session with him, he brought up that day and mentioned how I didn't say bye to him and it hurt him a little. Oh, oh, that's kind of flirtatious. It hurt him a little in a jokingly flirtatious way. Bruh, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, he knows what he's doing, because that's not... Yeah. I wouldn't, especially if I'm someone's personal trainer, like we're not even BFFs, yeah. I wouldn't say anything. I'd just be like, oh, I saw you working out. How'd it go? Like, what'd you work out on? Your right. chest, mm -hmm. your arm, like your leg? I don't know what people work out. You didn't say hi to me, and that, that hurt. Oh! <laughs> oh! Chair emoji. Are uh, you cringing? Oh. <laughs> Another one was when I was stretching and warming up. He complimented and said along the lines of, You sure are growing a bubble butt. Oh, <laughs> bro. Bubble butt? And he follows up with a. <laughs> bro, it all comes full circle. The friend works as a personal trainer. Oh. oh. No. No. Wow, but bubble butt is aggressive. Like, glutes is one thing, but may be acceptable. Bubble butt is like. I wanna f. Oh. Bubble butt? Bro, when's the last time you said someone had a bubble butt? Honey, you have a bubble butt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Another one was he offered to buy me something from the gym for my birthday as a gift when I told him that I was celebrating my birthday that day with family. And that was just so sweet. And I just thought of him as being a really nice and kind person. But I guess sometimes too nice. Like he didn't have to do that, honestly. Last one I can think of is when he told me that he wishes he could just watch me from the CCTV cameras from home so he can keep in track that I'm working out properly and completing every rep. To which I replied, hmm, well maybe I'll just send someone to dress up like me with a mask and you wouldn't even know. Eh. To which he replied, that wouldn't work because I know you and I know how you walk. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> okay, now that I'm typing that, that sounds a little bit like red flag, red flag, dead, dead, dead. And also, he always tells me, with you, I'm chill. I don't know, girl. Am I just being delusional? Like, these are just a few minor things, but there's a lot. Generally, we genuinely do have great conversation and banter, and I feel like this great chemistry is between us. But also, like, I don't know. I shouldn't get my hopes up because he's... He's just my personal trainer and could just be a marketing tactic. Or honestly, maybe I just need therapy. Like sometimes I forget he's 28 and is in a relationship. Is this normal for straight men? Clown emoji. I'm sure he's straight as a ruler. But anyways, I've decided to keep it at bay and just be a normal civilized individual around him even though this hopeless romantic heart of mine is about to burst throbbing. And hope I'll find a similar man like him at a better time and setting. But then again, I don't need no man. <laughs> I love this. This is literally my inner dialogue. <laughs> this is my inner dialogue. Is my husband flirting with me? Yeah, he is. Whatever, what I don't need a man. Uh, I enjoy the chemistry we have and wouldn't want to ruin it, even if it's just three days a week for an hour of our days. And even though it sometimes feels really heavy on my chest, I'll enjoy it while it lasts. And who knows, I'm sure there will be a point where we both need to stop our personal training sessions, hence why I guess I'm writing all of this and taking this out all on you. And I'm sorry. And I love you, Mr. Mango Booty, Dan Booty, and Tifa Pani, and the rest of your family. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, <laughs> what? so cute. I love that. Dan Booty. Dan Booty. Dan Booty. Mm. Sorry, I'm just weird like that. Okay, bye. I'm done. I really hope my personal trainer doesn't watch you, clown emoji. Bro. 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 Mm. I think that you are not delusional. But you know, therapy never hurt. I think that my mistake was asking you guys to send in confessions because I am that friend that will justify any of my friend's actions. You ran over your ex-boyfriend? That's okay. He is shaped like a speed bump. He is. So, I, I don't know. I don't think you're delusional. The CCTV was weird. I say marketing. So last one. Before I begin, Stephanie, I just want to tell you how much I love you and your content. 
Why am I reading this in a mysterious voice? <laughs> <laughs> it brings me so much happiness and joy. I always watch your videos whenever I'm supposed to be studying or listening to your true crime podcast whenever I'm showering. Showering? showering that's that's brave. brave. You truly bring a smile to my face, so thank you for doing what you do. Also, say hi to Mr. Mango Butt, Dan Dan, Tiffany, and Jason for me. Mm. Oh, now on to the story. Imagine a young girl no older than 16, barging into her sister's room after being forced to find her sister's charger. Yep, that's me. Wait, I'm envisioning a coming of age movie. And like the thing, that's me. My sister and I were going out somewhere. I don't exactly remember where. And once we were both sat in the car, she ordered me to go upstairs God, this is so relatable. And into her room to find her phone charger. Being the younger sister, I had to be, since apparently there's an unspoken rule that younger sisters do things for the older sister. Like what? I was my sister's water bitch for 18 years of my life. I've never seen What's her get- What's a water Give me a water? Yeah. <laughs> I was her water bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so I run upstairs and began my search. Although, as I began to look around on her desk, on the floor, in the plug sockets, I decided it would be a good option to check in her unmade bed. So I began to toss around the covers, only able to find clothes, makeup, bro, what's in her bed? Her <laughs> makeup clothes, <laughs> until I put, push away her pillows. Underneath one of her pillows was a weird looking contraption and as I appeared closer, I soon realized it was a vibrator. <laughs> I was so shocked. Like, could you blame me? It was only ever the two of us in the house excluding my parents and as a family, we have never openly talked about anything related to sex, let alone a sex toy, cause God forbid. And we're an Indian family, meaning we weren't so close, like we were, but not that type of close. In fact, whenever our family is watching movies together, till this day, I'm nearly 21 by the way, my mother would make me turn away whenever there's a kissing scene. <laughs> you know what's so funny? Whenever there's a kissing scene, uh -huh. I have to look away too if I'm with my parents. Uh, your mom doesn't make you look away? No, but Never? I don't want her to think I'm like... Like, I don't want her to think that I'm doing that, so I just have to look away. I have to act like it's I'm just, so yeah. not The interested. awkward part, time is always like when I'm watching something with Stephanie and Stephanie's mom, oh. and then all of a sudden they start. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it, was, there, it was so bad. Okay, there was one time we were recently on the couch together, mm -hmm. and I had my leg on his leg because I don't know why we live with my mom. So, anyway, the doors are closed. We're watching Too Hot to Handle. And there's this girl in a bikini, literally leaning on top of a guy on a lounge chair, and she's like making out with him, all right? My mom walks in, we make eye contact, <laughs> and I literally go, which is, this is a really popular yeah. show right now. And that was it. And she just looked at us Slowly and walked out. Walks so. away. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, when I saw this for a second, my 16 year old mind thought it was a face scrubber or something. You know, it wasn't shaped like a normal vibrator. Face scrubber? Until I saw the word satisfier written on it. Mm. I quickly dropped it, somehow found her charger and left. But during that whole night, I just remember feeling so disturbed and weirded out that I found out about that side of my sister. I didn't even talk to her for two whole weeks because I was so weirded out. Though, as days passed, my mind was unable to steer away from it. I mean, can you blame me? And one night, when my sister was away, I snuck into her room and stole the vibrator. <laughs> <laughs> now look, these next few parts, I'm not that proud of. But I can't really tell anyone else. And I just had to share it with someone. So, yeah, sorry, Steph. Girls gotta do what a girl's gotta do. So after some thought, maybe I was really horny or something. I mean, I was a growing girl, right? But I decided, let me test it out. And before you say anything, I did wash it. I did. It felt so weird at first, but like good, you know? I mean, I've never done something like that before, only with my hands, you know? And that one time soon turned into a multiple time thing, and every time my sister left the house, I would sneak in, take it, wash it, and leave it back in her room. Sometimes I would even leave it in my room for like two days or something if I wanted to be risque. Oh. But of course, fun times like these do unfortunately come to an end. It was just like the same situation as before. Take, use, and leave. But I started to feel more confident, and I would keep it in my room for more than two days. <gasps> One time, my family and I were going to someone's house, and I'm pretty sure it was Easter. Oh, the holy holiday, too, of all holidays. <laughs> Couldn't have been, I don't know, President's Day? <laughs> And before we left, I kept the vibrator inside one of my backpacks in the corner of my room, because who would go looking for it, right? During this time, I've been keeping it for almost a week, so yeah, maybe my sister was indeed looking for it. <laughs> Anyway, we go to the party, have some fun, and it's nighttime when my sister said she was heading out. We had two cars. She drove one there. She asked me and my two cousins if we wanted a lift home, but I said no. Even though in the back of my mind, I was slightly paranoid of her accidentally stumbling across the vibrator in my room. 
Anyway, after a while she left, went home by herself, meaning that she was home alone. Oh. I honestly forgot about it because we were playing a card game, so it was kind of the mm. last thing on my mind until that night when we get back home. Oh my god. I went into my room, changed, grabbed the bag, and as I was just about to do the nasty, <clears throat> the vibrator was gone. That's awkward. I mean, they could just make a pack and like, <clears throat> Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> The utter humiliation. She was probably in her early 20s at the time, so who knows what she was thinking about it, finding that in my room. I re literally tried to think of any type of excuse to take me out of this situation, but I was coming blank. It's not like I could tell anyone in the first place. So after a few days, I never saw her. We avoided each other for basically about a week or two, just like how I did at the beginning. Anyway, the two of us never mentioned it to each other, besides for this one time when we were having an argument and she yelled out, Oh my god. What? She yelled out, you're gonna take another thing from my room? Ah! My heart dropped, but we both knew she wouldn't elaborate, and me being the little bits that I am, I egged her on by saying, what other thing? Tell me what did I take from your room, <laughs> huh? She gave up the argument and left, and since she has never mentioned it, probably for the best, I guess we don't really want to li relive that moment. But anyway, has this ever happened to you, Stephanie, or any of your friends? I love you so much. I'm sorry if you found this disgusting or weird, because I know it is, LMAO. It's not, you know... Growing pains. Yeah. 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 I wish I could take it all back, but your girl was a horny little bit. Anyway, <laughs> love you, Mr. Mango Butt, Dan Dan, Tiffany, and Jason. Keep making amazing content. Wow. <laughs> Honestly, the act itself is like cringe. Because, you know, it's just cringe, especially when you have a sibling. It's just cringe, right? But her finding it? <laughs> yeah. I would need to. Re uh, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. I would need to. Yeah, yeah. That that would require some intensive, yeah. maybe some cognitive therapy. I would like to hear the sister's POV yeah. on this whole oh. story. Oh yeah, the sister is like, you know what? My little sister stole my V broader. I was so agitated. I snapped at my husband's coworker's wife. <laughs> Are you guys getting it? It's like coming full circle. So uh, that's gonna be it for today's video because I actually think that my C store is upstairs because because we just like to have an open door policy here. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure to check out Raycon linked in the description, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.